Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Planning Board meeting of July 10th, 2019. Uh, tonight we have uh, one public hearing and uh, <coughs> basically conceptual review. <coughs> uh, <coughs> God bless you. Sorry. Um, starting off with uh, the vouchers, if I can have a motion, please. Sure. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the voucher to the Merrimack Valley Planning Commission for the fiscal year 20 annual assessment in the amount of $3,135.78 as cited in the packet. I second. In the Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Can we get some uh, signatures on that phone? Love it. Thank you. With, uh, with that being said, uh, there are no minutes tonight. We have some correspondence, a uh, letter from FEMA. John, you want to fill us in on that? On the FEMA one? Yeah, the flood risk review meetings. And, um, or, um, and we also have one from uh, a letter from the town of Newbury, the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, it's a notice of a public hearing on a proposed construction to increase both the height and lot coverage at four. 35th Street on Plum Island. And we also have some uh, a submittal that will be coming in under when we open the hearing for 103A Lakeridge Drive. Um, is anybody uh, of the mind to uh, make a motion to consider the correspondence as read? I make a motion to uh, accept the correspondence as read. I second. Motion has been made and seconded to accept the correspondence as read. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. With that, why don't we go directly to our first public meeting, which is for 103A Lake Ridge Drive on lot subdivisions. I'd like, like to a motion to open that hearing. I'd like to recuse myself from this first. I'll let the record show that Bruce Free Freed uh, recuses himself and is leaving his seat and is uh, going to the audience. Do we have cuts? Oh, to the audience, fine. If he was leaving, I just want to make sure we had a number for him. Oh, okay. There he is. Okay. Hang, on. Hang out back there. Um, is there a motion to uh, reopen the public hearing for 103, lot 103A, Lake Ridge Drive? Mr. Chairman, I move that we reopen the hearing uh, for uh, 103A, mm -hmm. Lake Ridge Drive. Is there a second? A second. Motion has been made and seconded to reopen the public hearing for 103A Lake Ridge Drive. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Let the record show that that carried four to zero. One, one, what would it be? Recused. Recused. Uh, do we have the applicant here, John? Uh, no. Um, last week they informed me, um, actually it was two weeks ago they informed me that um, they haven't gotten an answer from the power company relative to granting the easement. And that was one of the conditions of the planning board at the last uh, public hearing on this was to uh, work on getting the easement granted uh, prior to the board taking final action. He hasn't gotten any response yet. So he's asked for a continuance of tonight's public hearing to the August 14th meeting. Um, he said it may even take longer than that, but he wasn't certain. And when when will we need an extension? Uh, we have um, an extension already granted and executed from the last meeting, Very good through uh, September 30th. That's already been recorded with the town clerk. And if September 30th comes and they don't have it, uh, we'll be going to the next quarter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> then it's December. Very good. We do it in quarters. Yeah. Just continue that in quarters. Uh, any any comments from the from the board? Uh, is there anyone in the audience that would like to stay, make a statement, uh, public officials or otherwise? Uh, Sir? So would you say your name for the sure, uh, for the record, please? Name and address. Matt Seibert. Matt? Matt Seibert. Last name spelled S-Y-B-E-R-T. Where do you live, I, uh, I own, uh, or I live on 4 Lake Ridge Drive. I own the, basically the abutting property. And... Um, yeah, I'll just give you guys my spiel real quick. I don't know how this guy works. I don't know how this works, but um, that's how it works. When, uh, <laughs> up here, right, right. come sit up, come so sit up here, Matt. Matt? Basically, basically on, like when I, when I brought the when I bought the property, um, I was told from my realtor that uh, there was 
some sort of agreement worked out with uh, the electric company that basically like I was told if I maintained the land I was able to use it and uh, I was also told there was a non-buildable lot and which which also factored into me buying the property um, <laughs> I grew up in Georgetown my wife also grew up in Georgetown you don't need to know that whatever <laughs> but um, anyway so I had landscapers uh, go back there and seed and mow it for a whole year and uh, next thing I knew there was an excavator, an excavator back there digging test holes I was like hey what are you guys doing You're digging up all the stuff that I just maintained for a <laughs> year but um, yeah I, I, I was under the impression it's a non-buildable lot and uh, nobody was going to use it we like you know all the everybody that lives in the neighborhood I've, I've talked to them all individually and said hey you know I know I live right next to it, but you guys are all welcome to use the field. Like, you know, flat, uh, dump your grass clippings, leaves, whatever branches, you know, have at it. And that's just what I thought it was always going to be. And I'm just confused as to how it's a buildable lot all of a sudden. You know, I mean, um, that's basically it. I mean, uh, I just, I, had, I don't know. Uh, um, I know Sal lives right across the street from me, and I don't know how much it's going to affect him because I know you get a lot of runoff from the rain and all that stuff, and you build your berms up all the time, and I don't know how it's going to affect you if they put a new lot in there, but uh, that's, that's basically it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Well, Matt, I can just tell you, just as a quick explanation, your, your realtor wasn't um, inaccurate when they said it's an unbuildable lot as it is right now today it is an unbuildable lot because you can't get a building permit because it doesn't have what's called frontage right uh, what the applicant is asking to do is create uh, a court which is a roadway yeah. and by creating that roadway they're creating the frontage that they need to become a buildable lot right. pretty you know 30 second summarization of how it all works and uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone that else that wanted to um, make any statements? It sounds like uh, you folks are here. I, I just wanted to say that I Sir, hope would you please state your name for the sorry. record and your address? Thank you. Sal Testaverde, 11 Lake Ridge Drive. Uh, I just wanted to say that I hope you received our petition from the neighborhood, basically, and acknowledge that it was received. Mm -hmm. I would appreciate that. I think we've stated... Uh, pretty much how we feel and I can say that every house that was visited signed that petition okay thank you thank you thank you sir and uh, John just just for the record um, I'm gonna just pull this out and uh, it uh, basically says and we might as well copy this as uh, what would it be exhibit a or submission yeah. a or something to that effect yep uh, this is a letter the letter is uh, dated July 1st, 2019. It was received at the planning office on July 2nd. Uh, July 2nd. Um, says, Dear Planning Board members, please accept this petition opposing the building of a court off Lake Ridge Drive and a one-house one house development on lot 103A. Thank you for reviewing our request and considering our concern for this proposal. Uh, sincerely, the residents of Lake Ridge Drive. Um, it goes on. Um, does anybody feel as though I need to read it into the record? This is officially now accepted into the record. Just to, there are a number of concerns here for, regarding frontage, health and safety, uh, the lack of documentation, um, the request history, concerns about the value of the, um, the neighborhood. And it's been signed by, well, there's two pages here of signatures i'm not gonna 20, not, 27. thank you see see this is what the clerk it's a does. team that's just 27 signatures um all from lake ridge drive and main street and the surrounding neighborhood i'd like to thank you folks this will be entered into the record and uh, john will put it in mm -hmm. um certainly taken into consideration when we decide what we decide is uh there anyone else that would like to make a comment or Statement. It was another letter that I received um, a month ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's on the file. Yeah, that ought to be in the record as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that case for just, just for a quick, um, a quick reference. The nature of the record. Yeah. Yeah. 
there is a letter from uh, Dan Rowe, 16 Lake Ridge Drive, and that was submitted on May 14th. That's one of the letters. And we have another letter uh, dated May 26th, and that's from uh, Mr. Desmond Dowling, 11 Lake Ridge Drive. John, are these letters in support or in opposition? In opposition. In opposition. Yeah. Concerns, opposition. And the rest of the letters are from the petitioner. Yeah, listen, an envelope. Is that an envelope sticking out over here? Right here? Uh, on the corner? Is that an envelope? No. The letter wasn't an envelope. No. Let me see real quick. <clears throat> It was a copy of a letter that went to National Grid. Okay. By Mrs. Tessa Hurdy. Would you care to summarize it? Or? And uh, basically, it was her concerns that she had presented at the last meeting concerning the health issues that have been on that street. And she wanted to inform National Grid. And she had the documentation of, you know, the people that were sick, mm -hmm. passed away or whatever. And basically, cancer was... Uh, the most prominent disease mm -hmm. of these, and there's only about 12 or 14 houses near the area, and they practically wow. every house really? was hit with cancer. Wow. So that was basically what it was, and I'm sure you'll find it. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I have it electronically, too. Okay. I got another Go question. Ahead. Sorry, like I said, this is my first. A absolutely. Matt? Um, yeah. So. I ran into a surveyor that was looking at everything because the guy basically walked on my property and I was like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> but uh, it, it looks like they have to go from the electric boxes down by the Harpers all the way to, um, I don't know what the address of the Harpers is, four, six, eight, I don't know. But um, so they're on across the Across Lake Ridge? You're talking about across Lake, Lake Ridge. Ridge. Yeah, so they have the electric boxes basically like, uh, if you look at my mailboxes, they're right there to the, to the right of the mailboxes. Are they gonna run that right down the whole road? Are they gonna go through my property? Are they gonna go in front of Sal's? Uh, how's that working? Certainly a legitimate question. John, uh, any chance we could pull up uh, 103? Yeah. Thank you. Certainly a legitimate question. We might be able to answer if it's proposed. There we go. Hi, Sal Verde again. <laughs> I was there the day that the uh, electric company was actually walking uh, on my side of the road across uh, Eric Copper's house uh, and my house. In fact, they were digging on my property in the corner. Uh, I did call the electric company and ask them, <laughs> would they be digging? And if they were, please do not dig across my property. There are burns there that prevent me from being flooded. And they told me that uh, they just had a new guy and they were practicing. That was the electric company. Yeah, they were just practicing how to practicing on people's land. How to dig and find things. <laughs> Thank you. Huh. Um, with respect to the original question that was asked about uh, electric service, um, John, I, I'm I'm not seeing on on this plan. I'm, I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing the um, the electrical service right here. Which which plan is this? Oh no no I don't mean the power lines. I, I mean the proposed uh, electric service to, uh, to provide product. electrical power, mm -hmm. gas to the new plot. To the new. Here we go. Should be. Oh there we go. Okay. So I, I think the people that sold me the property knew that that lot out back was a non-buildable lot, and now they're trying to basically make it a buildable so lot. Yep. Um, confused as to how that's happening. Can you guys we need documents. My, we need documents. We need documents yeah, to confirm that. Okay. So if you can figure out, I is there the any notation left. on your deed? What's that? Is there any notation on your deed? I'll, I'll, I'll grab my real estate records as, as soon as I can. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll bring them back for sure. I'm sorry, I missed it. We'll, we'll, 
What were we? Uh, the people that sold me the prop property knew the uh, lot out back was a non-buildable lot, and now they're trying to sell it as a buildable lot. I'm just confused as to how that happened. Um, at, at this point right now, it is a non-buildable lot. Okay. I tried to describe that. Uh, right. I probably didn't do it very well. Um, in order to make it a buildable lot, the owner of the property is petitioning this board to create a court, uh, basically to create a roadway. By creating that roadway, they create frontage because they have no frontage at this point. Right. If they're successful and this board approves that court, then frontage is created and the lot becomes buildable. That's basically all planning boards do. We make frontage. But anyway. Um, I thought you guys needed permission through National Grid. Well, I mean, the <laughs> proposed property. We don't need permission. The, the gentleman Whoever, yeah. who's, who's yeah. asking for this needs, needs an easement. And you need 30 feet of frontage, right? Uh, we need, this is in the R. A. You need 30 a feet district. of frontage. I think there's only 25. I read the notes the other day. Just talking about the width of the easement. The thing they're trying to Oh, with the underlying, underlying roadway. Underlying yeah. roadway. Not, that's, not, that's not the, um, oh, okay. the frontage. Frontage okay. is different. There, there needs to be... What is it? Like this is my first I don't know how it works. 160 foot? <laughs> 160, this is our right? Yeah. 125 foot. You need 125 foot of frontage. Okay. John, were you able to uh, ascertain where the, uh, the gas line is coming in? I, I don't... Uh, oh, there's the town power. There's your gas line. There's your town power right here. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. Going up across the street. Yeah, they'll be digging. They'll be digging across and then up. I, d I just want to help this across gentleman out here. Went up what side of the road? I'm sorry, sir? Across and digging up what side of the road? Both. It's going it's all the way middle. across. Okay. So you're going to be digging up mine and south side of the road? Um, it certainly looks as though they'll be tapping in right here on this side of the road. Can we scooch that up a little bit? Between yeah. 11 yeah. and 13 Lake Ridge across the street. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. See, can I just point out something? Just sure. cool. so you probably be better oriented. It appears that your property line, if you can follow the screen here, say that arrow right there. Your property line is just going all the way up, following the right of way yeah. of yeah. Lake Ridge Drive. Yeah. Okay. And then the right of way of Lake Ridge Drive <clears throat> goes right along the power lines. Oh yeah, yeah. no, no, They're right behind. It's, me. <laughs> it's kind of a strange layout. Um, it's it's not a typical layout, but you know this is from this point here to this point here. That's the entire width of the power line uh, easement, but it's also the right of way of Lake Ridge Drive. So here you have the physical features of Lake Ridge Drive from here to here. That would be the edge of pavement to edge of pavement. But the right of way, the width of the right of way of Lake Ridge Drive is from this bold line here to across the street here. And it varies, you know, 50 feet. And here it looks like it's probably closer to 70 or 80 feet from here to here. But, um, you know, your, your particular property the boundaries of your property are within this triangular area here. And this back land here, however it was described to you, it was still under private ownership. That's what I mean. Like yeah. the, the previous owners of the house, the people that sold me the property, sold me that property knowing that that lot out back was a non-buildable non lot. Knowing, I mean, they should have perhaps offered you. And I, I never got any offer about the land or well, the only thing I was told about the land out back was that if I took care of it and maintained it, I was able to use it. And if you did that for 20 years mm -hmm. on a consistent basis with the, there for two and a half. with the permission of the two owner, you would have a positive prescription claim to it. But uh, not, a, not, a, my, not my after one told me. Yeah, but not after one year. 20 years, you would. That's what my realtor told me. Because it is owned by somebody else. Yeah, but if the, if the property... They, they basically said that... Right, hey, but after 20 years, if you no, take care of it. They basically yeah. told me, hey, nobody's ever going to be back here. If you maintain the land, you know, there was a previous... There was, a, there was like, an agreement between the previous owners that was like, hey, you maintain the land, and, you know, we'll leave you alone back here, whatever. I mean, there was a garden back there, and 
Whatever, you know, as they own them. Yeah, right. And, uh, Thank you. That could become a civil matter. That that could could become a civil matter. John, do you want a copy of the the petition letter? Yeah. You want to? Thank you. You can take that. And uh, are there any other comments tonight? Uh, obviously, we're not going to get a great deal done. I really thank you for all your uh, all your input. Uh, but the gentleman that's representing the owner isn't here. Uh, they've asked for a continuation. Uh, at this point, if nobody else has any comments to make, our questions. Just See a question? One, just one question we were talking about. Sir, I, I need to. I need you to say your name and your your Dan address Rowe, for the record. Drive. I'm sorry. Dan Rowe, 16 Laker Drive. Hi, Mr. Rowe. How are you doing? Um, so one question was one of the problems that we had with the plan in place is that the uh, board is going to run five feet to the left of my property and Jack Kane's property. So the question is, if we ever, you know, if they ever get to the point where we're actually going to execute on this plan, um, we want to get that court moved away from the property line, um, uh, more at an angle into the property than running up against the two pieces of property that are currently in place. What um, what is what is the process for um, contending how they laid out the uh, court to begin with? If, if we ever get to that point, we haven't gotten to that point. <laughs> so we'll, we'll look at, we'll see the plans as they so develop, if, um, and uh, so where the court comes in from Lake Ridge, yeah, where it's being proposed, right? Where it's being proposed right on, here. The, on the right hand side, yeah, I can that see whole it. line is uh, runs five feet from my property and Jack Kane's property. Yeah, from this the property line, line is your okay. property line. And so the, the question the is, for us, it makes more sense to rotate this 45 degrees away from our property, so we're not we're not right up against the uh, proposed drainage system out there they've got on paper. So the question is, what uh, what's our position to get that changed if we ever get to that point? If that becomes an issue. Well, it sounds like this is a zoning issue, uh -huh. and if that's the back of your property. I believe it's more than five feet. I don't have the dimensions. Uh, it's more than five feet. So nobody can divide your property to violate the zoning that's current. So zoning is the driver behind where that... Uh, I'm sure it's not. What is it? Uh, wait a minute. I think I have I thought, it here. Hold I, mean, on. I thought it was five feet now. I thought they, had, they were five feet from the existing property line. I don't know what it is. I think now. that is the crushed stone. That's the infiltration trench that you're right, seeing exactly. there. Yeah. And to the left of that infiltration trench is the 15 foot wide, what's being proposed to be a 15 foot wide roadway. Right. Uh, again, whether or not the, uh, the chief of police, the, excuse me, the fire chief would be thrilled to see a 15 foot wide pavement. It's, uh, uh, that, that's a so there's another issue besides. Yeah. The rear is 10. There are a number of the issues. The side there. is 15 feet. And the front is 20 for so the RA district. Those are setbacks that... Uh, well, that's so what he's the, talking about. So the set, yeah, it's there a setback. No setback exactly. for roadway to mine. So the current setback is how much? That for a structure. No, his house is the structure. And his he needs these requirements for side, rear, and front. So the line with the X's is a fence on my property. The setback from... Um, from there, not actually. That's not the the property line is about a foot beyond that. So the exactly. setback to the infiltration system is how much on paper? Is it? I thought it was five. Uh, it's I, you know, looking 15 at this um, is on the side. And looking at this in this request, it, it it appears that it would be reasonable, and, and it would be a matter of just shifting it over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and if and it comes to that, and that's my point. Is that yeah. you know. When, if we ever get to that point, we'd like to discuss move, you know, rotating this further into the property instead that's of running away. Right. I mean, that's really one of the reasons why we have public hearings on this, yeah. so we yeah. receive all the input to, to make the best decision we yeah. can. I mean, it's easy to recognize that the road is right uh, on his property line. Absolutely, lines. we could certainly ask the applicant when, yeah. when he's here uh, if he would uh, agree to do something like that. Okay. Um, uh, also, buffering. Yeah. Uh, 
along that roadway so that it's you're not visually seeing right. it. Right. That's okay. some of the things that so we, we, we just want to get on the record that that's a concern. I, absolutely, that but I can tell you, come on back and, and remind us. Point. We're very forgetful. Yep. <laughs> and um, what he said. <laughs> Not John. Anybody else? <laughs> no, John doesn't forget that. I'm an airhead. Mine's like a colander. Are there any? Yes, please. Say, state your name and. I'm Kaylee Putnam. I live at Two Lakers Drive. Hi, Kaylee. I don't know this, but how many continuances are you allowed for? Infinite. Infinite. I'm sorry? Infinite. Infinite. Seriously? Really? No, as much as we can put up with. <laughs> That's not much. I pay There's, There's no specific wow. number. <laughs> That's a good question. For a Absolutely. While now, and now we all showed up. That's right. And uh -huh. now yeah. the and other I party is asking that. to continue yeah. this hearing. So I'm just I'm just curious if there was a limit to that. No, technically, to my knowledge, there is no limit. And and I have seen, over the course of the last two decades or so, um, developers that um, use that unlimited continuance ability to continuously ask for continuances until none of the abutters show up. I, I'm not saying it, it sounds like a technique, but uh, I, I think it might be for some people. But I've seen it happen. Yeah, but I, I'm not in favor of that. Thank you for your question. <laughs> it's, a, it's a special. Ah, it's a good question. We're all busy. Excellent question. We all got stuff to do. But to, to answer Absolutely. it from a practical, pragmatic standpoint, when this board no longer has any questions and there's no more information to be garnered, at that point, we close the hearing. Uh, um, I have a question regarding the past refusal to build on this lot. We, this lot has been refused twice minimally. We're not sure about a third time. When Carl Tid owned this property, there, he had approached the town twice, and the, he was refused twice. We would like to know where that documentation is, what caused the refusal, and um, why there's an, even a discussion after two refusals dealing with the same issue, Great lack question. of frontage. And now we're just playing architectural games with this? But Ms. Testaverde, if I can ask you, yeah. when, when you say it was refused by the town, um, was it a planning board issue? I it, believe so. Are you saying this came before the planning board or uh, he petitioned someone Maybe asked to? Well, was I'm thinking more like the building that? inspector. Mm -hmm. if, because if it came before the building inspector, the building inspector would have looked at the parcel and said, you don't have frontage, this, sorry. When, when Mr. Tiff was trying to deal with the development of Lake Ridge Drive because everybody who's been in town for any length of time knows how to own all of the property that was Lake Ridge as it began to be divided up. At one point we were a private road and Kyle owned the road and at that time he went to the town whether it was the selectmen, whether it was the board, the zoning board, I don't know exactly. We weren't involved and how proposed that it be a buildable law, and he was refused. Well, that, just a few details, Sal Testaverde again. And the fact is that I don't know in the town who suggested this, but the town said that if you pave Lake Ridge Drive with asphalt, then you would get the buildable law. So he did. But he didn't get a pay, he didn't get a buildable lot. We don't know who had done that, but I mean there must be some written record somewhere. I've actually found it in the. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Would you state your name for the uh, for the record? First read from 13 Lake Ridge Drive. I found that in the documentation of scanned in articles from the Georgetown Advocate, and I can produce that document. What year, if you, if you would, do you, approximately? Sometime in the 1980s. Yeah. Yeah. There was a planning board then. Yeah. I actually have a copy of it on my desk before. Yeah, I think it was like 90s. Yeah. Yes. Yes. 90s. Like, yeah. like to, like to recommend because the applicant did say they made 
most likely won't yeah. have an answer from the power company. Folks, could we um, could could we limit the discussion to, <laughs> so I can hear the planner? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So th there's a strong likelihood that the applicant won't have an answer from the power company relative to acquiring the easement uh, for the August meeting. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest um, we do have a busy meeting that that date already. We're only meeting one time in August, right? Right. Yeah. And rather than disrupt any more of their summer, the abutters, mm -hmm. um, it would probably be a cordial me measure for the board to uh, consider <coughs> the September 11th meeting. September and we, 11th? And we do have an extension of request that's already been executed. Until 30, right? Yeah. Sound like a plan? If I Sounds may. like a plan. Um, I think we have one more comment. One more comment. Sal Testaverde, 11 Lake Bridge Drive. Is it <coughs> possible that uh, your committee can request from National Grid any documentation from Carl Tibbs requesting for that buildable lot, for that lot to try to be buildable? If anyone, maybe they they have records from the 90s. Um, Is that potentially possible? So I'm curious about it. Who asked back when? And who got denied? Yeah, if, if I'm not being uh, I'm not being disingenuous when I say this, sir, of what relevance is that? Uh, well, it would be it would prove that basic it would prove basically that this has come before the town twice and been refused. Okay, that's and it would give How a specific date also. Mm -hmm. But this is national but grid. Maybe, maybe the article that uh, my neighbor has, maybe that has that might the information. Be illuminating have, so. too. Maybe at some point we might have to ask them, okay. I would think. Um, I really don't know a mechanism that would allow us to ask them, though. I don't know of any request where we could compel them to give information. It's, this isn't really a court or anything like that. We could send an email. We could do that for information purposes, I would imagine. You're just saying you're but not, if they, you're not going to do anything. Well, I don't. You, send it, you're bad. saying you're going to send an email. You're mm -hmm. basically just telling you're going to blow them off, all right? Um, but what can on. we do? We don't have any legal power. Yeah, we, we, we cannot compel them to answer. We can't send them a subpoena. And have you so, so ever you're telling me that nobody, nobody can talk to these guys back, back and, have, and, and ask them about what happened back then? About why it's not we, a all we can do is ask sir, we them. Can, we that's ask. exactly we what we can do. But that's the limit it. of the ask. control that we have. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? Any more? Yeah, I'm just Last saying, when now. you say uh, Jim DeMetto, Falls School Street, Georgetown, they're applying as a court. Before they were applying as frontages at Archie at an actual road. They were, denied a, they were denied access because they didn't have the frontage. This is different because the law has changed that. So they're now applying as using the court and the frontage on the court. So the relevance of them, it, it does become a little bit irrelevant sure. because of the years. Okay. So okay. That court, the yeah. court bylaw okay. came in after. I didn't mean to be flippant or no, blowing no, no, anybody no, no, off no, or no, anything. Certainly not. It, it, just, it doesn't hold a great deal of relevance yeah. in my yeah. mind. It may be. Yeah. doesn't hold it. Yeah. Um, anything else? Anybody else? Yeah, I, I was just okay. going to further explain okay. that they are before us because our subdivision rules and regulations and the zoning ordinance allow for courts and lanes. In this particular case, the court's being proposed because it is allowed um, for one lot. And they need an easement from the power company to get out to the roadway. If they had frontage and it was minimal, but it met the court provision of having frontage on Lake Ridge. And you're going to build the roadway so you would actually have, you know, the required frontage coming off of the court. Right. So I, I mean, I, I drive a work truck. Uh, I work for NESC, and I, I drove up and uh, seen this guy start surveying whatever the hell he was doing, and uh, say, like, "Hey, what are you doing?" And he's like, "Oh." I'm just, looking at some stuff, and I'm um, like, are you guys going to put a property back there? And he said, yeah, if your company lets us. And he didn't look at my truck or anything. He just assumed that I was in a work truck, whatever. And I was like, my, my company? He's like, yeah. And I he take it he presumed you were working for the power company. Yes, exactly. Yeah. He assumed and, I was and, working for National Grid. Yeah. And, and this does, a great deal of this does hinge on the fact that oh, yeah, no, the it, gentleman it sounds, it sounds needs, like it all goes through National Grid. Uh, if the gentleman can't get an adequate easement to use that land, this, this parcel, this little... So it sounds like I should just thing. email National Grid and say, hey, I really don't uh, agree with everything that you're trying to do. 
where I'm at, and uh, this has been brought up before. I, it, basically, if I express my concerns, the national grid it sounds like that we can just solve I, this right. No one would stop you from doing that. Absolutely. Sir. You, you live in America. You can certainly go yes. directly Good. to that. I'll write a letter to the national grid. You might, you might consider. I'm, I'm not strategizing, but you seem to have a lot of people that are in agreement with you, and it might be effective if you had those signatures on your letter yeah, as well. I'll, just as, a, just as, a, grid. Um, yeah. just as a, a point of, of information, I believe the letter was also sent yes. to National Grid. National Grid has received the letter regarding health and, health and well-being and safety, and the petition with all the signatures and our, our discussion regarding our concerns for this particular problem. Excellent. just want to remind everybody, this uh, the court, this one lot court is uh, is still is a special permit and uh, because someone has recused Bruce has recused uh, it requires you know, everyone on this board to vote affirmatively for it in order to get a permit and uh, with that being said uh, I don't mean to limit the discussion but it's warm up here and I'm sure you folks sure don't want to hang I around gotta go to work. and before <laughs> right before you do that you might want to hear a date and can I have a motion uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman uh, I move we continue uh, the hearing for uh, 103A Lakeridge Avenue um, to be continued until 11 September 2019 motion to continue uh, 10 lot 103A Lake Ridge to uh, uh, September 11. September 11. September 11. Is there a second for that? Second. Motion has been made by Bob, seconded by Joanne, to continue this to September 11, 2019, and I'll add in seven o'clock. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Folks, hope to see you again uh, on September 11. September 11. Yeah. And you're doing Thanks, the Mary right Mary. thing. You're doing exactly you what you're much. supposed to be doing. <laughs> Thank you very you're much. very welcome. You're Thank you for participating. Right. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate this is like good <laughs> citizenship. <laughs> it's, it's a definition. No, no, no. Thank you very much for hearing me. I got my own issue with public hearing still going on. Uh, public session, so. Right. <laughs> so what's next? Okay. Yeah. Up next on the uh, on the agenda, John, would you um would you give us a little um, background on the um, conceptual review for East Main Street Rec Park, why the Park and Rec is here before <laughs> us, et cetera, et cetera? Okay. Um, board members may recall, this is many months now in the making, that they are now coming back before us um, with a revised plan. And the revised plan calls for amending the previously approved site plan. Mm -hmm. site plan approved by the planning board um, and that's what they're here for this evening I asked them to come in before the board to for conceptual purpose of presenting what they would like the park to end up being you know it, it's it's an amendment from the previously approved one it's not as extensively built out the site as it was previously approved so they would like to show the plan that everybody got copies of preceding this meeting and the electronic copies were sent out um, um, yesterday but the, everybody's had the, the large hard copies um, in preparation for this meeting this evening <coughs> as part of this and as I talked to the applicants um, through this discussion this evening I was hoping in recommending as a town planner um, if the board is willing to go along with it after their presentation and if this is all copus copacetic to the planning board that um, the revised plans um, could be considered as an amended an amended site plan mm -hmm. relative to what was previously approved okay. and for them to be able to go forward if the board is amenable to it for them to go forward uh, this evening through to completion of the subdivision as an amended uh, subdivisions. It's site lesser. Plan. Site, uh, site, site plan. Plan. It, Special it, permit. It's it's lesser of an impact on the environment in the overall land area than what was previous previously approved. So it's less of an impact than what than what was planned for previously and approved. Right. So if everything goes right this evening, 
maybe the board may want to consider allowing them to continue with the approval showing the amended plan of record being the as built plan at the end of the development and this plan that they have this evening you know would be the the, the plans that they would proceed going through forward. to fruition and that the actual physical improvements will be depicted accurately in the as built now in addition to that um, that the project from here on out uh, would be in field inspected mm -hmm. um, by a field ins inspector engineer who I would recommend uh, Larry Graham the board can figure whoever they might want you might want Dave Barker but um, you but know, that's up, again that's up to the board to decide but the town would have their own engineer yeah. I just think from this point on we have a good opportunity now we have revised plans that we asked for mm -hmm. uh, many months ago they're, they're finally here before us this evening so ultimately it's up to the board to decide this evening either to accept these as plans for them to move forward mm -hmm. or possibly if, you, if the board chooses to have a new public hearing um, in the near future that would be your prerogative to make as a decision tonight uh, as an aside, just for the record, uh, I want the record to reflect that uh, Bruce Fried is back on the board. Uh, he joins us back again. Um, with that being said, thank you, John. Thank you very much. Um, I hope I made some sense for it. It certainly made sense to me. I think it made sense to a lot of people. Um, would you folks please do us the favor of uh, John? Uh, uh, introducing John yourself. Chairman of the Park and Rec. Uh, I'm John Perry with Gale Associates, the engineer for the project. Thank you. Uh, did you Gary Fowler, member of the Park and Rec. Oh, oh, I, oh, oh, understood, Mr. Fowler. Thank you. As a member of the Park and Rec. Um, would you care to um, give us a breakdown of what you're proposing? Yeah, so, we, so we started this project in 2008. Um, and basically sometime, well, 2000 we started buying land. 2012 we started doing work. We're getting about 70 cents on the dollar when we got job work being done. Um, we've been out to bid twice. The, the costs have been going through the roof. We've actually, our our, our bids were not accepted because we didn't have the money um, so we, we got a park that's been ready to play on for a couple of years and no one's been able to use it um, so the idea is also we got we got a lot of stress now going from the money we use is from the CPC to move on to other projects that are considered um, necessary as well so um, we decided to and then once again we can't open the park until it's finished so we thought we'd scale back and and get the park to, to a state, a safe state that which it can be used. Um, and that's really the driving course right now. We, you know, it's, it's like a dollar twenty or a dollar thirty per doll. That's my estimates, not not I don't would say Gail, but people now are everybody's busy so that no one's no one's sharpening their pencil and we hope to get this parking lot done as it was so we've only taken things out. We haven't modified things. So you, the parking lot just as it was designed initially. We had to take out the skateboard park and other features, but n nothing was added it was just removing things that we could get this park to a usable state I understand. so there are no additions there are only subtractions they are all subtractions um, would, you, would you care to pick, uh, pick that up John yeah yeah um this could you walk us through a little bit of uh, I can put my easel up here if you yeah. I put my easel up real quick and I'll just walk yeah. through what yeah, that the, might be helpful be if you could throw it up sir is he an engineer? Is this yes. yes. Um, John's been the engineer, I think, from the start. So. Well, essentially. Yeah, essentially. 2012, yeah, I think. Yeah, we picked it up. Yeah, we picked it up. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. There was a year. There was a. There was a year we had another engineer, right? So the start, we picked it up, and then we we finished um, we finished the permitting. We do a handful of meetings for this um, for this for this board. Um, Largely the same makeup. You're a landscape engineer. I uh, civil engineer. Civil. Yes, exactly. So this is the this is the original plan here, okay, from 2014 that was permitted, and um, what it is just for a quick refresher was um, you know a paved road coming in from the driveway of the church here. This is the um, name of the church, Jim. Uh, the, um, New Life Sorry, Community. New Life Community Church. Right, so this was the existing driveway, and then we were extending the roadway down into the parcel here. So the first bit of it is paved, and then we're switching over just to gravel. 
the remainder of it is gravel down to um, a small dog park here. Uh, this was a 80 foot um, Pony League style baseball diamond for you know Little League. Um, it had originally you know, an actual clay infield and a backstop. Um, we had a, a parking lot here, again a gravel parking lot which is going to be unchanged. We had a concrete skate park with a rain garden around it and that was essentially it. And what we're planning to do is scale back a little bit, like Jim said, by removing, uh, oh, also there was, there was sidewalks from this point uh, down along, along the roadway. Uh, and what we want to do is scale back by you know, removing the, um, the infield, which having, this is all grass now, this was built 2015, I think it was, 2016. 16, 16, 16, 17. This is all grass now, irrigated natural grass. Um, there's no actual clay infield, there's no backstop. So what we propose to do is actually not, is just to leave this as is, not build a, an actual formal baseball field, if you will. Um, not put in a concrete skate park. Uh, this is showing as just grass, just leave it as like loam and seed grass area. Uh, we can still put this stone trench around it just to catch some of the, you know, the drainage and infiltrate in that area. Uh, we're still going to leave this parking lot as it was originally approved, and we want to remove the sidewalk that was along the, the roadway there. Uh, no, nope. no. Nope. Hey, look at that! We, we yeah. and, and just when just, just when we needed it the most. I always bring the paper because I, I, the, the analog it, is back. It's yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's not usually is. Times, so. Is there hope down the road to maybe potentially add those features back in? Yes, I. I mean, I. Well, when I say hope, I I would hope there would be, but I mean now, um, it all becomes a, a who's who's running the project and. Right, and, I, I I know. But the the area is 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 still there for that. Nothing's been replaced. Nothing's been replaced. Right. Um, so there was still the potential for it to be. And I would like to see that. But like I said, I I don't drive the ship, and and, no, and who knows what. How but long it, you have we, to wait for it? But you know, it would be nice if someone someone younger than myself took that on, because you know, the designs are here and the drawings are here. John, right. so could you pull up this one, uh, C one hundred and two? C one hundred and two. Yeah. If you could. I think it shows a, a, a really good, just what I noticed by just quickly looking through the plants and uh, one of the nice Let things me about it. this down so I can follow it. There you go. Um, C102. Yeah. Oh, yes. Got a, long, here. got a long way to go. Yeah, I think uh, it should be too far. Oh, too far. Sorry. Hold on. That. My bad, buddy. My no problem. Bad. Um, the reason I'm calling here is that I just, one of the things that really stood out, at least in my mind, um, and, and it is, it's a big change. Um, the area that we're looking at there, if you could blow it up a little bit, immediately to the right of the, um, the parking facility. Um, the parking facility, if I'm not mistaken, hasn't really changed any. No. That's all gravel surface. It's all pervious. Um, rainwater runs through. Uh, however, to the right of that is, uh, was the old proposed uh, skate park. Right. And that was going to be 100% impervious surface concrete. Yes. At right. this point, that is now grass proposed grass. to be luminescy grass, right? Correct. Okay, I am reading that correctly. Yes. Okay, great. Great. I uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, without even going into it, roughly how many square feet of impervious surface have we removed? Just. Who I be guessing? Whole boatload. Yeah, a few thousand square feet probably. A metric boat load. Okay. The old plant had a drainage at the end of that skate park, as I recall. Yeah, it had a rain garden to catch the runoff from the concrete. But if we're not doing the concrete, we, we propose to remove that rain garden. So you didn't need the rain garden anymore because you got the sand and grass. Right, exactly. Is that correct? Correct. Um, if I recall, this feature and the ball field were really the two things that were what this was for. I mean, the use of this space now is what? So the use of the space is 
the fields for, for sports, the three ponds that are out there for people walking and walking trails. Mm -hmm. um, the skate park was a feature that hopefully someday in the future can be done, but for now we'll be probably picnic tables and people can go down and enjoy it. The, remember, the parking lot is actually bigger than was originally envisioned for just the sporting event so people could go in and, and use the area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The greenway, as we say, is, is the potential for the greenway to go all the way out to. So it, it is the parking is a little bit larger than was planned for that. The dog park can be utilized, which has yeah, yeah. been a huge thing for people. There's been a few people who have been able to use because they've been members, and the dog park is going to be a huge thing for people in town. Um, and it'll get people out there using the ponds, uh, skating in the winter. Um, yeah, well, you know. no, I can't go away. Skating in the winter because we there's a provision no plowing in the winter. Right. But if uh, they could, yeah. they could theoretically walk out there. No shoe in. No shoe in. Mm -hmm. and, and take take their skates off their back. Shovel the pond shovel. off. Yeah. Right. So um, nobody's been playing ball on the field. Can can you? Nobody's play? been out playing ball on the fields. But you can't get there at all, right? You can walk. You could there. walk in there. You could walk in. Okay. Well, the walk. The gates, the gates there, but yeah. the gates locked most of the time. I just got an email from Joe, and if he's watching out, yeah, we, for some reason, people have been breaking the lock on the gates, so uh, really? we put a lock on, and the lock's gone. We put another lock on, so. so it shows how much people want to use it. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I mean, with with that in mind, Jimmy, uh, um, just a quick question. Um, so, assuming assuming this board tonight said, yeah, go for it, Jimmy, in some fashion. I'm not sure exactly what that fashion is, John, but. You can you can work out all those details for us, and we said go for it, Jimmy. What what, what would you do, Jimmy? I take the documents that have been shown and go out to bid. And hopefully, mm -hmm. you, okay. either try to get this project bidded and and done in either late fall or early spring. Hopefully, late fall because we, mm -hmm. with the timing we have now and the, we could probably get this. We have we have. I think a reasonable amount of money in the fund to do it mm -hmm. this time because of the CTC allocation. Mm -hmm. And then you know, my best guess is in the late spring we could open the park or late summer, if depending on when it goes out to bid and when it work it's done. Um, so it would be usable. Um, and then hopefully with people seeing the area, um, we'll get a group of people who want to make continuous improvements like the GA has done on American Legion and different groups in the beachfront. Uh, you know, there's been different places improved over the years because people want to utilize it. So right now, the only thing that's really preventing the opening is the lack of the town's ability Off -street to parking. insure. Excuse we me? We can't insure that. We can't insure it. Right. Because it's not complete, according to the planning board special permit. So this would go a long way complete. to making it complete. Yeah. Uh, I saw a question from the audience. I'm sorry, I'm sir. Sorry. Would, would you state your name and yeah, address for the record, sir? Member of the planning board. I, I wanted to make a statement. I thought you were, you were a member of the planning board. board. I'm Let's get up here. <laughs> I get my peas what mixed up. What are you doing over there? Park and Excuse me. Sorry, Dan. Park and Recreation. Couldn't help. I, I'm okay. trying to remember the meeting where there was, I, I think it was a joint meeting probably with the Board of Selectmen. I'm a member of the Board of Selectmen, too, and a Park and Recreation <laughs> Committee. There. And we had a, a good group of people show up looking to use the dog, dog park. And, it, and when's it going to open? That was, I mean, I've been somewhat involved following this project. And um, I, I can't remember other groups coming. You, you know, the, the question was, I, I think, leaning towards the future. Um, I do know that um, I'm also a member of the Community Preservation Committee. And somebody came You're forward. a busy guy, sir. <laughs> Did I get that one right? <laughs> and somebody came forward there wanting to kind of change the use. Uh, do you really need the skateboard park and wanted to put in some basketball courts? <laughs> and and uh, Harry would be familiar with master plan language and things of that. And I think you're familiar right now. We've got another group in town looking for recreation fields and that. So as the needs of the town change, but, but it's really to, to get this finished and open that the dog park people would, would love to see it. And then what the future brings, I, I mean, it's like Jim said, I hope it's, it's going to be a gateway to the, what do we call it, the green belt? Greenway. Yeah. Greenway. And uh, who knows what the future holds, but it, it will be, it, it will be, a, 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 um, what's, what's the term I'm looking for? It's, it's, it, could constantly be changing 
and it'll be More phase, time. different phases, I guess. That's what I'm looking at. And I always thought of this as different phases. It, you know, when it first started, it was known that we were getting the funding, most of it from CPC, as the years went on to finish it. But, um, now there's other things that, that CPC funding may be going to, where we really need to get this finished, then figure out the future of the town and where the C community preservation money will go. As terrific as the original design was, it was pretty ambitious. Yeah, I mean, you know, my ambition right now from you know, Bob Morehouse's old farm to this spot here, it's all natural woods. And so yeah. animals can now go through the green belt and go out to. So that was, we had a couple of intentions. The Greenway was an important intention to go from Georgetown Riley State Forest for animals all the way out to the Cranes Pond Natural Wildlife Refuge. And we've protected a lot of that. That greenway or that natural, because animals were going out in the old days of Bob Morehouse's farm and, and coyotes and deer, and then using that. So, in my per, my perspective, we've been successful because we've taken all that land and protected it. This is also an, another portion of it, providing access at both ends, and this is one end we want to provide access, and hopefully in another ten years <coughs> there'll be some more access from Martell Way as well. I, I was going to ask, could you can you shrink this a little bit? Yeah. I, I wanted to uh, just clarify that open water, this is the field, this is one of the trails that that's goes actually, all the way out. Right. I think that that's, that's important. And right. if I'm not mistaken, across, uh, uh, across 133, little jag, and you're on that trail into the Georgetown Rally State Forest. Correct. Yeah. So it's a terrific connection. It yes. really is. And I agree with you. I have always, uh, I can ride my my mountain bike all the way to Topsfield, to the that's to the pond cool. at Topsfield yeah. through the woods. Yeah, yeah. that's So I mean, cool. um, I forget the name of the pond that's there in Topsfield. Um, the Puffet, no, 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 I'm sorry, but this, the linkage is, is huge as far as the distance you can go that's through nice. the woods. No, no, this is in Topsfield, right where the beach is in Topsfield. Um, it used to be where. Um, Jack Hackett's used to be many, many years ago. I'm a long way beyond. Greenbelt owns that. Yeah, I know. I know. That you can go to that. You can go to that spot on a mountain bike from from the from the back roads, yeah. No, through the woods. Yeah. There's actually a, a forge, I guess they call it, is where a, a glacier creates a, a ridge between two swamps, and you can follow it for three miles through the woods. It's pretty neat. That wow. sounds really cool. That yeah, is. Yeah. But that's Get all. But it's, it's a Cleveland Hill, Hill, Cleveland farm. It goes through. There's a portion of it that's unprotected, but there's, you can get all the way. You can almost get all the way to Wenham right now through the woods. Hoods Pond. Huh? Hoods Pond. Hoods Pond. That's a, correct. So I mean, it opens up for the future to have these people who wanted mountain bike and stuff that they have this access. Now they can go through this green this greenway and hopefully get out to Cranes Pond Wildlife Refuge. And there's a ton of land out there as well, not only horseback but but um, mountain, mountain biking and other uses. Um, this is at this point pretty wooded, right? All this that's all right. that's wooded, and there's an old some old fire roads out there. You you can go into Google Maps, and if you go to historical imagery and go back, you find a winter shot. You can see all the fire roads, so get your bearings straight. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of natural fire roads out Mer there. Merrimack Valley Planning Commission also has a, a trails map. Yes. A series of maps. Yes. Um, the whole region. So. Um, Will Park and Rec be able to mow this? They're mowing it now. They're mowing it now. And they got a sprinkler. We have a sprinkler system on it now. And we've been, we've been doing some feeding, uh, seed and uh, some feeding of yeah, this. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So we've, we've, the town's been paying to maintain it for so the last couple of years. You can use it. So, so if I could just add, so many months ago, again, the last time we were reviewing this, we did ask them to produce a plan, an amended site plan, which that's what we're looking at now. We, so this would become the plan of record mm -hmm. to move forward with and as required uh, field inspections would be conducted by the board so chooses by our consultant engineer mm -hmm. and, and it isn't a constant thing but you know whenever they're doing something substantial that needs engineering review mm -hmm. they do out there but the, the question that he brought up John was about insurance coverage right what do we need to do to get insurance coverage if we approve that just, a special permit with a modification. Yeah, th that's the part here that we have to coordinate with the board selectmen. 
So whatever action the board takes, if this is the new plan of record for them to progress to completion, right? and the as-built plan produced that replicates what's actually out there in the field completed. Once it's done. Yeah, once it's done. After that bid and after construction. And that this the field inspections, those reports are in our file and we have everything documented. And that point in time when we the board accepts the as-built plan, right. that would be coordinated. That approval would be coordinated with the Board of Selectmen and the insurance company would be brought in at that point in time to make sure that uh, the project can be uh, actually insured. Can there be any way of uh, communicating so that we know what the correct, pro the acceptable process for the insurance company? Yeah. So before we, you know, so before we get an as belt and everything else? Yep. It's a major That's what I'm looking for, see, something. Yeah. If we determine this yeah. to be Because they would hate to see us do this and then come back again for another hearing because it's not acceptable. Yeah. Um, next week, we I'm giving right the uh, Board of Selectmen a presentation okay. on the it's present status major. of the bike path. But it's uh, uh, I can work this, what's yeah. taking place tonight for the park uh, yeah. as part of that, too. Just to get the ball rolling communication. Yeah. Right. Did you have any questions about that, Gary? Much simpler. What I just said? Do you have any questions about what I just said? No. Okay. No, we, from this point on, we want to make sure mm -hmm. that this is going to be usable and insurable. Mm -hmm. That's right. It sounds like we're on the right track here. Yeah. Um, it's Joe. not the pr usual process for a modification on a special permit. But it only say only in the regard if it was more intensive mm -hmm. it, it was expanding mm -hmm. the was story. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and we have to but, we yeah. clearly have to have yeah. a public hearing mm -hmm. in that regard but it, it's less intense it's making it it's a reduction it's making it more simple in the scope of the project yeah. 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 yeah yeah so so we, would we consider this a minor modification that that could be the the choice of the planning board this evening i would con i would i would because it's a reduction in the mm -hmm. scope of the project I would consider it for the purposes of of moving forward. Yeah, I would consider it a minor modification. In, in the Is that a motion, Mr. Mr. Watts? Let's. And, and I just time. want to emphasize that these are engineered drawings. Mm -hmm. That's what we asked for. Mm -hmm. So the amendment of, of what they originally planned for has been now presented with amended site plans. Mm -hmm. These would be the superseding site plans of record. Right. And they're official records. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this I would recommend that you write it up first, and then we vote on whatever he writes up. Well, I, I, I think the I first think thing is simple. Yeah. Yeah. The first thing is to uh, a motion by by Bob to um, consider this to be a minor modification. Modification. Yes. And, well, is there a second? I second. Motion made and seconded. Um, all in favor of considering this to be a minor modification? Say aye. 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 All opposed. I'll uh, because let I the record show that the uh, motion carries four to zero with one abstention. Uh, yeah. So this is now a modem, minor modification, which means that it does not require the, no uh, public, the <laughs> public notice and hearing and all that stuff. We can do it here right now. And, I, and I'd like to see uh, Chairman the decision and John write it up mm -hmm. so that it can meet the what he has just absolutely and right now I think we should give John the benefit of uh, input as far as what that decision will say yeah um, and you mentioned John that um, any um, all of the construction that occurs to make this happen which Jimmy you're gonna put out to bid and whoever the contractor is that wins the successful bid will be out in the field doing it and they will be responsible to be watched by uh, the town's um, field inspection engineer. That's correct. That's um, in the. That would be in the decision. That would be in the decision. Yeah, Anything definitely. else, guys? What else would we put? What, what, are, what are we putting in this decision? If it, just off the top of your head here. Any ideas, Tilly? You have anything else that you? Don't you ask me. <laughs> well, I'll uh, quote you the law, and I don't want to. Do <laughs> <laughs> Yes, no. you know, you guys do it. <laughs> I think the most important part of the decision would be that our uh, consultant engineer uh, would uh, 
supervise the construction mm -hmm. of the project from here on out. Yeah, um, the Dave Varga supervises yeah, yeah. do regular field That's visits. On an as-needed basis. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. no. The, it, I wasn't 100 percent happy with the first way it went around, so that's good. Yeah, yeah, no problem. yeah we we didn't use our town engineer to. Um, no. Yeah, and, we, and we, there was we got some reports, but I, I, I could have done could have done a better job there. So we learned from our mistakes, and we move forward. And anything else, John? Can you think of? And I mean, keep in mind that this is something that um, that decision. Um, in this, the approval would be good for um, period. What are you looking for? A one year, two year? Mm -hmm. uh, I think we want to do a one year. I, I think the selectman would probably bury me if it took longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> so I would think a one year is all that's necessary. Right. And that they would come back if an extension is required. Do we have to give them three years? Why? Two, well, it's it, 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 it's something it's changed. More, it's regularly practiced now too. Okay. But it's it's up to any municipality to decide. You know, if it's going to be three years. What, what's really important to understand: one year flies. More than enough. I know. I know. <laughs> you, know you, you don't usually approve a plan, <clears throat> and you know they're breaking ground within a year. It's, it's usually a year and a half to two years. I mean, a lot of the work's already done. Mm. Yeah, so. Here. so we're ready to go out to bid. We have we this time we have, we have. I'm not saying plenty of money. We hope we have plenty of money in the fund, so we should be able to accept a bid, a reasonable cost. I mean, it's amazing with the scope of costs that someone will quote a bid. You get a million to four hundred thousand on some projects. I mean, it's crazy. But hopefully, we'll get enough competitive people bidding this project. It's small, condensed, it's quick, and and we'll we'll get it done. To Joanne's question. Um, how much work have you completed? Every well, the parking lot's the main thing. Everything's pretty much the parking lot. The, the bid document, in. the bid documents for the last bid are pretty close. He's going to have to make a few amendments on the original bid that we sent out. So we should be able to get a bid out fairly soon. I mean, yeah, the, 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 the road, actual, the road's done, uh -huh. and the fields essentially done. Dog park's done. The, the parking lot's been, done. The parking, parking lot's been cleared, de stumped, and just waiting for materials to come in. Gotcha. Um, so that's so that's really the main thing. Bringing in all the material to, re to bring the grade up, to do the area where the grass is and, uh, and the um, the berm. And so that's really the major area. So it's material. Dog park's already fenced in. Yeah. So yeah, the dog park's been there for a couple of years. If worst comes to worst, Pete Durkee could get this done in an afternoon. In yeah. Spare time. <laughs> right. <laughs> we have the handicap accessible areas that got to be done. Might estimate. take a Thursday <laughs> and a Friday. This I'm is not sure. time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any anybody have any uh, other ideas, <laughs> questions, concerns, suggestions for um, conditions? Are we good here, kids? Now, do we want to put this on for um, the August fourteenth meeting for uh, review was, and possible execution of the decision? That sounds like a good idea, John. If if you could get it out to us for that, yep, that would be a great idea. Okay. But in the meantime, uh, that could be nice we have the ability. It sure sounds like uh, it's it's just ministerial stuff at that it's point. It's just yeah. a formality. Should, yeah. should we wait to that point to bid, or should we start going? Uh, well, let's put it this way: um, Is there a motion right now that we can make and take? Um, a motion to um, approve the mod the modification. Yeah. Would wouldn't that be the appropriate yeah. thing yeah, at this you point? Approve Approval and um, subject to um, the board signing the decision. What was the previous vote? Wasn't that yeah. the same? No. It, no. Well, minor modification. Minor but. modification. Um, motion to approve the plan submitted. Dated, what was that, May? 19, so what was it, May? Something? Um, May 10th. Dated May 10th. May 10th. No revision date. 2019, mm -hmm. um, as the modification documents. Somebody want to make that motion? Uh, motion to um, and make the plans submitted May 10th, dated May 10th, 2019, as the modification documents. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the um, Drawings uh, dated uh, May 10th, 10th. Um, as the uh, modification, as the minor modification 
that we previously uh, approved. That we are approving? Yes, that we are approving. Is there a second for I that? I second. Does anybody need me to re repeat that? Or was, was that pretty clear? Mm -hmm. Bottom line, these plans, we say yes. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? All abstaining. All abstaining. Motion carries for this four to zero with one abstention. Um, gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Jimmy, thank you. It's been a long haul. Yeah, and, really. Uh, I know everybody Good loves to call too. I everybody loves to throw the spitballs at you, buddy. But uh, yeah, you've been uh, you've been doing yeoman's work. I was 47 when I started this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you look 37. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Gary, for everything you do, pal, on so the 73 you committees that you're on. For <laughs> yeah. Before uh, May 10th. It feels like 73. Okay. Um, what do you mean? Well, if you're going to have this ready for the May 10th meeting, is that correct? No, no, no. Uh, no, no, August 14th. August 14th, yeah. August 14th yeah. or, excuse me, yeah. vote by August 14th. Yeah, yeah we'll get it. We'll get it's enough time, isn't so it? So you'll oh, have yeah. the selectmen yeah. all done? Yep. Okay. Now, um, this might come up. I mean, I'm giving a presentation to the Board of Selectmen on the present status of the bike path that's next, their next meeting, which is next week. And this probably will come up as a matter of discussion, and I'll bring them up to speed with what took place. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Two for one. Yeah. It's two for I like it. Progress. Little by little by little. It's important. This, this park <laughs> will come to fruition. Oh man, I can't wait to bring my dog there. <laughs> you and a bunch of other people. Is there, is there any other business that anybody would like to bring up on a hot summer July night? night? Hot summer night? What happened to all the things on our agenda tonight? It's just kind of. No, no, no. That, it, no, the reason what happened was nothing was ready. Yeah. You know, that's why everything was kicked. So it was kicked off to August 14th. Mm -hmm. And that's our only meeting in August, and then we're into September and yeah. it, with the summer go. Summer flies. August has a. So we're after Fourth of July anyway. Oh yeah, it? August. Our, our August meeting is is pretty full, isn't it? Yeah. It's pretty packed up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it is what it is. I, and I know that huh, you have a lot of work coming. I uh, I called Patty in the in the ZBA about another issue about the team yeah. property. And uh, she, she, she was like beside herself. Mm -hmm. It was just really what And that's all coming your way. Incoming. Yeah. Well, it's already here for us, really. They, they were dealing with the plans we're now dealing with, you know, before. So. Um, but I think Jimmy did a, made, made the right call. Yeah. In reducing the scope of this project. Where's the park and rec meet? You know? The park and me rec usually meets on the, on the, on the second, second floor. floor in that room okay. over there and you look you just missed the chairman and one of the other people that were up here uh, as a courtesy 30 seconds to talk to us okay. thank it's, you it's cooler <laughs> down there <laughs> is there anything else we've missed uh, i'm not seeing anything else remaining on the no, agenda it, the fema uh, oh, letter the FEMA. that you wanted me to mention yeah if anybody yeah. does want to go mm -hmm. you know it's a new fema presentation on uh, this whole region and um, Tuesday, July 16th, next week at 1.30 p.m. in the Haverhill Library, uh, Johnson Auditorium, 99 Main Street in Haverhill. Uh, parking is available. So that's going to be a major FEMA presentation if anybody's interested in it. The other, the other two it. scheduled meetings are uh, Wednesday, July 17th, Manchester Department this of Public Works, and then um, Wednesday, July 17th at 1 p.m. The other one's at 9 a.m., New Hampshire Fire Academy. Uh, in Concord. I don't think anybody's going up that way, but um, so that's a, a major presentation um, of the new FEMA maps. Uh, I have one question about uh, that I'm for discussion. You mentioned that the court was to create frontage, mm -hmm. but none of those words are in our bylaws when it comes to court. However, it does say that for common drive. So a court, it doesn't say that will create frontage. It's nowhere. 
And if you wanted to look at it, you'll right. understand what I'm saying. But definitive subdivision roadway doesn't say that it creates frontage. It's just uh, that is what the end result of creating a road does. It creates frontage for the lots that abut it. Yeah, that's the only that's the only way. You oh, can't way? You said no, way. No, Is yeah, that a no. joke? Was you you said lots, cannot, though. That's you cannot well, subdivide said, property lot, without one on frontage. Usually. And, and if you... Harry had the minutes of the annual town meeting when this was passed. Mm -hmm. So the whole intent of courts and lanes was to allow for back lands mm. to be developed that, that would otherwise not be allowed developable. Um, yeah. You know, they wouldn't be allowed to be developed. So the court in the lane, once constructed, shown on a plan, that's your frontage for that lot. Because otherwise they'd be landlocked. <coughs> Absolutely. And the special permit provision of that was to allow the board to use its discretion when it felt it was inappropriate. Uh, not every single back lot is developable or should be developable. That's what the special permit provision was two people on the board could stop it from occurring. And that's why we made it special permit. Um, everybody got a copy of um, that court decision that I sent to everybody about the board having not only the ability to waive its regulations, this is kind of an aside mm -hmm. to what we're mm -hmm. involved with. You, you actually are obligated to grant waivers in order for people to be able to develop their property. To not grant, and there's a court decision on this mm -hmm. by uh, land court judge. I'll have to read that again. Piper. Piper? Yeah. Yeah, I'd um, like to read it. If, if the board does not grant waivers, you could be um, using uh, non allowable, non legal discretion. Mm -hmm. So it, it's pretty much you have yeah. the authority by statute, state statute and local adoption of state statute to grant waivers of all subdivision rules and regulations on the books. If you do not grant them, and you have to read that case. Oh, I, I get it. Yeah. If you do not grant them, you, you could your decision not to grant could be appealed and you could lose um, your decision, your decision, say to Total not grant, decision. yeah, because it, the way he put it in, the, in that decision is there's minimal allowance for discretion, but not granting a request of waiver. What's the point of having rules and regulations? It then? Sounds, yeah, it sounds it, like you're obligated <laughs> to to do whatever grant you want. Waiver. You you're something. obligated this to is ignore one judge using one case to yeah. uh, to make an opinion. To state his opinion. And you have to read the whole I'm, case. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but it, but yeah. in the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court, it, it, his decision was upheld. I For was that upheld. case. Yeah, I thought it was upheld. For one case. Yeah, yeah you have to send us that Piper, what is it? Judge Piper, I did send it to you guys. It's, oh, it's, you did? Was that yeah. among the 25,000 emails that you sent out? Thank you very much, Jeff. Recently you sent it? Was it a busy, busy yeah. week email wise. Yesterday. yesterday. A busy, busy yes. week. Even. You in one of those that you sent yesterday? Yes. Yeah. Oh, all right. I'll look. We'll find it. No, 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 no. This was specific to because I didn't delete all those. Specific, I didn't, yeah, no, this I was didn't specific to what the we were button requested to do. That this is a separate relative lawsuit. To, <laughs> is this relative Coleman? to yes. Oh, like that that does relate to Georgetown, though. That that lawsuit because you know just speaking Coleman. broadly this, this, and openly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Broadly about yeah, broad, litigation. Broadly, um, I missed all it, of the opinions and uh, writings of requested staff members and appointed officials, elected officials, um, pretty much has been um, acquired by town council for that matter. And um, it will be heard uh, on Monday in Land Court, July 15th. And um, if anybody wants to go, you, you know, it's open to the public. There's probably plenty of seating. In Salem? No, Boston. Main court. Forget it. Uh, perhaps on our... Um, I know, well, it's not a, fun going In there. August, we could have an executive session, and uh, we'd be able to put that on the agenda, yeah. post it on the agenda to have an executive session. 
and we can hear the results of the litigation for um, for the case. Would it make sense to uh, ask the town's attorney to uh, to come and um, Speak? talk us through and, and answer legal questions in my hand? about how that impacts the decisions that we are required to make? Um, I would say we would be able to make a decision like that once we have more information at that executive session, then we could request it yeah. at that executive session and then have another. Right. Yeah. If, if, I could, if I could suggest, we, we may or may not be involved with it, Very depending possible. on the litigation issues and what ends up being the decision. Oh, it's never no call. Yeah. Right. What is the case? Quick summary. Two minute summary. We uh, discuss that. We'll, we can discuss that in, the, no, in okay. the executive session. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's a dispute over a piece of uh, an old road. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Oh, uh, anything else you can think of, John? Um, you know, no, not, not necessarily. Okay. Um, if we do have the August 14th meeting, um, get a good night's sleep prior to <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we you know if we you know I, we'll be able to get through it it's not going to be too cumbersome hopefully they'll have the air conditioner fixed by then yeah and we'll be now we're going to drop like flies I guarantee you we'll be down we'll be done with by 10 10 10 30 oh I think we can guarantee 10, 10 30 that. 11 <laughs> it's a goal when your eyes start shutting on you exactly. we'll, we'll start the, the table oh, all we have I to know. do is limit the amount of time we have to deal with it and continue it out uh, I'm listening for a motion. Anybody have one? I have a motion to end the meeting. Motion to go adjourn. home. Motion to adjourn. Seconded by mm. all in favor. Aye. 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 All opposed. Aye. The ayes have it. Thank Aye. you very much, everyone. Have a great night.